Welcome to this video. My name is Mark Scythian. The date today is July 5th, 2024. This video is going to focus on the practical use of the definite integral in calculus. So assume we're working with a fuel injector on a General Electric CF6 gas turbofan engine and the idle flow rate of fuel delivery is 0.9 pounds mass per second and the maximum flow rate at full throttle is 6.3 pounds per second flow rate. Assume the spool up time period from idle to max flow is 10 seconds so you move it, uh, the throttle from idle to max throttle. There's the capacitance delay to make sure the air fuel ratio is within its stoichiometric balance. So it's approximately a 10 second spool up time. So the question is how many pounds mass of fuel are expended? within the 10 second spool up time. So we're dealing graphically with the area under the curve as the totality of fuel consumption. What this means, it's not a linear relationship. So if we were to take the final or maximum flow rate of 6.3 pounds mass per second and then subtract the idle flow rate of 0 0.9 pounds mass per second followed by dividing this difference into 10 seconds we would compute 5.4 pounds mass per second over 10 seconds which equates to 0.54 pounds mass per second squared, thus establishing a fuel flow acceleration value, 0.54 pounds per second squared. So then we can access the definite integral over the upper limit of 10 seconds and lower limit of zero seconds. We need to translate the 0.54 from its second slope or second derivative rate of change as an acceleration function and reverse it into its first derivative. So we're gonna take a slope and go backwards with the slope or play jeopardy with the slope. Here's the answer, we wanna get the question. So that is the function of the integral to find the totality or the area under the curve so there are rules in integration, integrals, and derivatives. So the opposite of the derivative is the integral, and the forward opposite of the slope or derivative is the integral. So if we took a y over x value, such as this acceleration, it would be a slope or a derivative, the second derivative. So if we take it back to the first derivative, then we can get a rate of flow, not the change in rate of flow, the pounds mass per second squared. We would just get pounds mass per second at a specific time period over the 10 second time period. So we have to take 0.54 derivative of x dx and so if we obey the rules for integration, we're gonna increase the base power value by one. So this then just equates to 0.54x. Fuel flow rate. So we're not talking about the change in the rate, like the acceleration, but just the fuel flow rate over the function of time. So if we were to calculate what the flow rate was at two seconds, we could just place two into x, 
and multiply 2 times 0.54, so it would get about 1.08 pounds per second at the two second time marker. But we have to integrate one more time so we can take it back to its original function, the total pounds flow over the different fuel flow rates over each second of 10 seconds time period. So we integrate once more and we then find the integral of the definite integral of 0.54x then dx. So we can increase the power of x by one higher, so from one to two, so now it's 0.54 squared. So if we were to reverse this 0.54 squared by finding its derivative, then the two would come down and multiply itself times the 0.54, and that would actually make the value incorrect. So we have to compensate for that two coming down. So we can either multiply it by uh, one half or we can divide it by two. So upon doing so, we get 0.27 uh, uh, x squared, 0.27 x squared. So that is the total pounds mass over the function of time. So to compute this definite second integral, which is now calculating the total pounds mass over the function of time rather than just the fuel flow rate, we can take the 0.27 and then place the 10 second upper limit value in place of x and then x squared, so 10 seconds squared times 0.27 and then we can subtract 0.27 times 0 seconds squared so now this second value becomes 0 so we have 20, uh, point, we have 27.0 because 10 squared is 100 times 0.27. So we have 27.0 minus 0. So 27 pounds mass total fuel expenditure is the value of how many pounds of fuel are expended within the 10 seconds full of time. So this is an important recognition because with respect to fuel management, especially during taxiing and takeoff, etc., we have issues with other methods to conserve fuel So, the different rates of change culminate into a total fuel consumption. So what this proves is that there's actually much more fuel consumption than anticipated. So by applying a second integral or a second definite integral, we can prove with absolute certainty that just during the spool up time of 10 seconds, we're going to consume 27 pounds of fuel, not to mention the 18 or 19 or 20 second takeoff roll at 6.3 pounds fuel per second. So the rates of change are very important because then the totality through integration can solve the actual total pounds mass fuel consumption. Thank you for watching this video and have a great day.